Good day everyone, this is Dr. Soper here, and today I'll be providing a brief overview of the various types or categories of numbers. To begin, note that mathematicians have identified many different types of numbers. Here I have arranged these various types of numbers into a hierarchy in order to help you better visualize how they are related to each other. Although this hierarchy may appear to be complicated, don't be intimidated. Understanding the different types or categories into which numbers can be classified is easier than it may seem, and by the time you have finished this video, you will have a solid grasp of all of the primary types of numbers that are used in mathematics. Let's begin our investigation by learning about natural numbers. Traditionally, natural numbers have been defined as the set of positive whole numbers such as 1, 2, 3, 4, and so forth. Put another way, natural numbers are simply the numbers that we use for counting. Imagine, for example, that you are trying to count all of the stars in the night sky. Using the natural numbers, you would begin by counting one star, and then two stars, and then three stars, and so forth. Note that all of these numbers are whole numbers. In the night sky, there is no such thing as half a star. Although zero is sometimes included in the set of natural numbers, it has an interesting history and therefore deserves a few moments of our attention. Well-defined systems of numerals date back at least 3,500 years to the ancient Egyptians. However, it was not until approximately 2,700 years ago that the idea of using zero as a number with its own numeral was first developed by the Babylonians. Our modern usage of the numeral zero was pioneered by the Indian mathematician Brahmagupta, who was the first to develop rules for using zero with positive and negative numbers in conjunction with basic mathematical operations such as addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Next we will consider the negative integers. Negative integers are sometimes referred to as the negative natural numbers and include the set of whole counting numbers that are less than zero, such as minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four, and so forth. As with all negative numbers, negative integers are conventionally written with a minus sign in front of the number in order to distinguish them from non-negative numbers. All of the types of numbers that we have considered thus far can be classified as integers. An integer is simply a number that can be written without a fractional or decimal component. The complete set of integers, which includes the natural numbers, zero, and the negative integers, is often denoted using what is known as a blackboard bold letter Z. As you can see, integers comprise one of the two different types of rational numbers. Before exploring the other variety of rational number, that is, the non-integer rational numbers, Let's take a moment to learn about rational numbers in general. A rational number is a number that can be expressed as a quotient of two integers, with the constraint that the denominator is not equal to zero. Put another way, a rational number is simply a number that can be expressed as one integer divided by another integer, where the second integer is not equal to zero. Note that this second integer, that is the denominator, might be equal to 1, and for this reason all integers are also rational numbers. 5 divided by 1, for example, is equal to 5. The set of rational numbers is often denoted using the blackboard bold letter Q, where Q stands for quotient. Now that we have a basic knowledge of rational numbers, we can easily understand non-integer rational numbers. 
Non-integer rational numbers are simply rational numbers that cannot be written without a fractional or decimal component. For example, the numbers 1 3rd, 2.5, and 1.6666 are all non-integer rational numbers because they cannot be written without relying upon fractions or decimals. One of the interesting characteristics of non-integer rational numbers is that their decimal expansions will always either terminate after a finite number of digits or will begin to repeat the same finite sequence of digits over and over. To clarify using the examples shown above, note that the decimal component of 2.5 terminates immediately after the digit 5 while in the decimal component of 1.6666, the digit 6 repeats itself over and over ad infinitum. Aside from rational numbers, there is also a type of number that is known as an irrational number. Note that irrational numbers can be either algebraic or non-algebraic, the difference between which we will discuss shortly. Broadly speaking, an irrational number is any number that cannot be expressed as a quotient of two integers where the denominator is not equal to zero. It is therefore not possible to represent an irrational number using a simple fraction. Furthermore, unlike with a rational number, the decimal expansion of an irrational number will never terminate or have a finite sequence of digits that repeats itself over and over. Keep in mind that an irrational number may or may not be algebraic. Perhaps the most popular and well-known example of an irrational algebraic real number is the square root of 2. In case you are interested, the square root of 2 is algebraic because it is the solution to the expression of x squared minus 2 equals 0. To better understand this, we need to examine the definition of algebraic numbers. Unfortunately, the definition of an algebraic number is quite technical, so we will seek to understand algebraic numbers using an example. Technically speaking, an algebraic number is any number that is a root of a non-zero polynomial where the polynomial expression uses rational coefficients. That definition is a bit scary, so let's consider an example. Imagine that we have a polynomial expression such as 8x squared minus 4x plus 2 equals 0. In this polynomial, x is considered to be an algebraic number because the polynomial is non-zero, x is a root of the polynomial, and the polynomial's coefficients, that is 8, 4, and 2, are all rational numbers. Put simply, a non-algebraic number is any number that does not satisfy the definition of an algebraic number. That is, a number is non-algebraic if it is not a root of a non-zero polynomial equation with rational coefficients. It is important to note that mathematicians usually refer to non-algebraic numbers as transcendental numbers. It is also important to note that the vast majority of all real numbers are actually transcendental numbers. Perhaps the most popular and well-known examples of transcendental numbers include pi and the mathematical constant e, which is the base of the natural logarithm. Note that all transcendental real numbers are not only non-algebraic, but are also irrational. The converse, however, is not true, since it is possible to have algebraic numbers that are also irrational numbers. 
Note also that all of the numbers that we've discussed thus far can be considered real numbers. A real number can perhaps best be understood as a point on an infinitely long line, which is commonly referred to by mathematicians as the real line, or more intuitively, as the number line. The number line extends from negative infinity on one side to positive infinity on the other side. The notion of distance has meaning on the number line, such that the distance between the integers 1 and 2, for example, is exactly equal to the distance between the integers 3 and 4. Any algebraic or non-algebraic real number can be located at a specific point on the number line. The set of real numbers is often denoted using the blackboard bold letter R, where the R stands for real. Aside from the set of real numbers, the other major category of numbers is the imaginary numbers. An imaginary number is a number that can be written as a real number multiplied by the imaginary unit i, where i is defined by the property i squared equals negative 1. Except for the number 0, which modern mathematicians understand to be simultaneously both a real number and an imaginary number, an interesting characteristic of imaginary numbers is that they always produce negative real numbers when squared. The square of the imaginary number 3i, for example, is negative 9. Finally, at the highest level of our hierarchy, we find complex numbers. Both real numbers and imaginary numbers are each just a subtype or special case of the complex numbers. A complex number is a number which contains both a real part and an imaginary part. Complex numbers are commonly expressed using the form a plus bi, where a is a real number and bi is an imaginary number. In this conceptualization, a real number is simply a complex number whose imaginary part is equal to zero, while an imaginary number is simply a complex number whose real part is equal to zero. Complex numbers can be understood geometrically as a point on a complex plane where the horizontal axis is the real number line and the vertical axis is the imaginary number line. Using this framework, any complex number can be easily visualized simply as a location within the geometric space. Well, my friends, thus ends our overview of the various types or categories of numbers. I hope that you learned something interesting in this lesson, and until next time, have a great day.